I tell you what, we are in a very prophetic time in a prophetic moment. I want you to stop what you're doing right now, and I want you to pick up your phone, send a text message, and tell them they need to tune in. I believe that we are truly in a window of opportunity. This is unlike any other time that we've ever been in. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, ladies and gentlemen, June 24th, 2022, a crack was made in the altar of Baal, a crack was made in the altar of Moloch, a crack was made in every demonic high place that has kept this nation in bondage. And God has been giving us, as of right now, a year and a half to get ourselves together. I believe 2024 is going to be unlike any other year that you've ever experienced. I believe that we are coming into a time where those that have been prepared are getting ready to be released. You know, just I found out today that Dr. King's uh, youngest son, Dexter, had passed away at the age of 62 and lost his battle to prostate cancer. And I was thinking about Dr. King and, and how we celebrated his life last week and the commemorated how he lived. Do you realize Dr. King just wanted to have a nice church? That's all that he wanted. He didn't want to go out and do anything to be an activist. He didn't want to go out there, and he was just happy with going there. He was the assistant pastor at his father's church, and he was doing a work for God. But God had a higher call. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to stop doing church as usual. Jesus Christ is coming back. There are so many things that need our attention. The reason why my wife and I decided to open up a pregnancy center, the reason why we did it, it wasn't because it was on our radar. That was the problem. It's should have been our radar. We have made church a business. We have made church a place where we come and we have our social hour. But what happened to being out on the streets? What happened to preaching the gospel? When's the last time most of the people in our church have won somebody to Jesus? The reason why the, the, the United States of America is in the condition that it's in is because the church has been confined to stay inside the four walls. But I believe in 24, God is ready to do a new thing in the earth. He's ready to use you. He's ready to use me. He's ready to use Cornerstone. I'm so glad that Cornerstone is willing to get outside of what is normal Christian television and even touch on uh, uh, different topics like this because it is so important. This is the reason why we're seeing all the tragedies and, and the traumas and, and the shootings and the economic downfall of America. Why is all this happening? Because America has turned its face to the altar of Molech. We have sacrificed and killed over over 60 million babies since 1973. And now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, it is an opportunity now for you and I to step into what it is that God has for us. This is the season that God is ready to release the latter rain. Since December of 2023, about a month ago, the Lord spoke to me so clearly and said, tell my people, if you're still here, you've made it. You need to understand right where you are. If you are still here, God has something for you. There's a lot of people that didn't see 2024. There's a lot of people that died on December 31st, 2023. But if you are still here, God wants you to know that you are not forgotten. You need to understand, I believe, that we've been in a holding pattern as a church. But 24 is when God is calling the troops to arise and shine. For our light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. I believe with all of my heart that we are coming into the the time of the latter rain. And if you have been dry, if you have felt empty, don't think of that as a negative thing. The reason why you have felt that way is because God is saying the previous season, my good God, has come to a close. And you're waiting on doors to open. You're waiting on miracles to take place. Let me give you some good gospel news. You tuned in at the right time and the right moment because God hasn't forgotten about you. God is ready to bless you. This is your time, season, and moment. Esther, you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I know maybe nobody knows your name, but God knows where you are. He's got a GPS on your location. He's got an Apple tracker on your iPhone. He knows exactly where you are, and he's sending help from heaven because it is your season. It is your time for the latter rain to be released into your life. And the reason why things have been so dry, the reason why you have felt so empty, it is not because you have done something wrong. It is not because something's wrong with you. But it's because this season has come to a close. 
Before they went into the promised land, the Bible says that the manna ceased. The Bible says that at that time, all those things that they had had with the water coming out of the rock, the manna that came down every day, it all completely stopped. And it wasn't because something was wrong, but the season was getting ready to change. God was getting ready to open up the floodgates and bring them into the promised land. Let me preach to somebody right now. See, you have to remember, when things are drying up in your life, it's only because it was a resource for a certain amount of time, but when God God changes the time. He allows things to dry up. If you remember the story, Elijah comes to the widow woman at Zarephath and he tells her, bake me a cake first. We all know that story. And what did he do? He told her this promise, the cruise of oil and the barrel of meal, they will not waste until when? The Lord sends rain upon the earth. My good God Almighty, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost already. And some of you are saying, but this past season, why has the cruise of oil dried up? This past season, it seems like my prayer life's gone a little stale. This past season, I feel like I don't got any effervescence and bounce, and a bounce to my step. And, and I just feel like something is missing. You need to understand the reason why the barrel of meal is running low. The reason why, baby, that the cruise of oil is going dry, it's because I hear hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the Lord saying, I'm getting ready to open up the floodgates and, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And, and if you're still here, and the reason why you were so attacked in 23 is because 24 is the year that God is getting ready to blow your mind. If, they, if that's the reason why, you need to understand, if I am still here, it is only because my best and my blessed days are getting ready to hit hit my life. Uh, you need to let the devil know you've hit me with your best shot and I'm still here. This is the season where the devil's about to be on the run and the latter rain is getting ready to be released. Uh, if you understand anything about the latter rain, the early rain is a time where you focus on sowing. It cultivates the ground so you can put the seed in for the harvest. It's only for that season. It's the time of preparation. This is the year. Are y'all ready for this? This is the year 5784, the year 2024. Now, Pastor Gary, I need you to do some math for me. Five plus seven is what? Twelve. Plus eight is 20. Plus four? 24. 24. <laughs> 5784 equals 24. This is the year of 24. If you divide 24 by 2, what do you have? 12. You have 12. There were 12 tribes in the Old Testament, the latter rain. There are, oh my good God. There are 12 apostles in the New Testament, symbolic of the latter rain. What are you saying, Pastor Jay? 5, 7, 8, 4. You add it all up, you get 24. In the year of 2024, why is the number 24 significant? It is the year when the early and the latter rain in Joel chapter 2 come together in the first month. God has said, I've given you the former rain moderately, but now I'm going to cause the latter rain to be released into your life. Uh, what does it mean? What are you saying? The early rain is when God prepares you, David. You're running from javelins, from Saul, but you're brought down Goliath. But I'm talking to some people right now that God said this is your promised land season. You're getting ready to be anointed. The, the scepter and the crown's getting ready to fall from Saul. You're getting ready to come into something that you ain't never had before in your life. Uh, and that's the reason why it's been so dry because God said this is the season that you're breaking out of where you are. You're breaking out of the place where you've been, and I'm bringing you into an open place. I'm bringing you into a place that I prepared for you and that I prepared you for. I'm getting happy already. I'm telling you, if you have made it, baby, it's because God is getting ready to open the floodgates in your life and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. You need to lift up your hands right where you are and say, God, let it rain on me. Let it rain on my marriage. Let it rain on my ministry. Let it rain in my life because this is the season for the latter rain. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody is going to get a major breakthrough today. Everything is going to shift in your life as a result of hearing this word. God said, wherever you go, tell my people I haven't forgotten. Tell my people that I'm getting ready to bless them. And I want you to hear this. There are five revelations I want to give you quickly. Five revelations of the latter rain. 
that God wants you to take into your 24. My good God Almighty, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel something getting ready. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if you are still here, my wife got shirts made up and said, I'm still here. After all the hell I've been through, every attack that I've received, all the lies, and baby, the devil couldn't take me out, I am still here. You lost your job, but you're still here. You, the man walked out on you, but you're still here. People left you in the ministry, left you for death, but you're still here. And if you are still here, you need to give God a praise right where you are. Have a little praise break right in that living room where you are, in that jail cell where you are, down there in Jacksonville, Florida. Give God some praise right where you are because if you are still here, the devil has done all that he can and your best days are right around the corner. Five revelations. Are you ready? Grab your pen. Let's get ready. I want you to take these because I want you to declare these over your life as you go into 24. Number one, when the latter rain comes, it's a time when purpose and prophecy are fulfilled. It's a time, the early rain is when prophecy is revealed the latter rain is when prophecy is received. My good God. The early rain, watch this, is when you do a work for God. But the latter rain is when God starts working for you. I'm telling you right now, things that have been difficult are about to get easy. Because you're coming out of a time where everything took faith. But now you're coming into a season where it's only going to take grace. It's going to take God working in and through you. Where you've sweat and toiled and labored. You're about to come in to, to what God calls the Lord of the breakthrough. Baal Perazim. David understood this. It's a time when God begins to work for you. When it does, you don't have to stay up and fast and pray every night. It doesn't mean you don't have to work. Because I, he said, I'll give you the early rain and the latter rain in the first month in Joel chapter 2 when he said I would begin to restore to you the years. It's not that you won't work for God but now God is going to work for you and God is going to be working over time and that's why you need the latter rain because when the rain falls where you've sowed and you haven't reaped this is the season that God's going to bring it into your life. Every prophecy, every promise, this is the season for it. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare quit. Get up, pastor. Get up, preacher. Get up, grandma. You've been believing for your kids. Get up and say, this is my time. I want you to get up right now and walk around your living room and start declaring what God has said to you. Get, bring back out those promises. Bring back out that prophecy and say he's not a God that he should lie. He will not lie. If he said it, he will bring it to pass, and it's coming for you in this hour. It's a time when purpose and prophecy are fulfilled. Why? Because God gave you prophetic words for the purpose that he has for your life. Listen, hear me well. 24 is the year when purposes are going to be ignited. They are going to be ignited in a supernatural way. You've been waiting, saying, I know that there's got to be more than what I've gotten here. Man, I've got to have a whole lot more. Listen, hold on, baby. You're about to go for a ride in 24. God's getting ready to bless your life in a supernatural way. Number two, it's a time of recompense and restoration. It's a time of justice. I need you to hear me when I say this. There are those of you, watch this, there are people in right places, but they're the wrong folks. I'm going to say it again. There are people in right places, but they're the wrong people in the right spots. Somebody sitting in your spot, Mordecai. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. If you watch on the news, there's a lot of people that have been done wrong. That people are going back and say, what's going on? Because it's the time of the latter rain. See, God keeps the books. And you've got to understand, even though Haman had a plan to destroy Mordecai, God kept the books and said, wait a minute. When Haman was actually come to hang Mordecai on the gallows, the Bible says that God kept King Ahasuerus up. And he didn't know why he was up. He said, bring me the book of the Chronicles. And there was some things that Mordecai had done that he had not been rewarded for. And this is the reality. It was the time of the latter rain. And we know the story. At that point, Haman comes in at the exact same time to kill Mordecai. But his blessing beat Haman's 
plan to the spot. My good God. God's about to step in on those areas that you've been attacked and say, stop it. And he's about to bless you for the years that you have sown in tears. You're about to reap in joy. Why? It's because of the purpose, the call, and the plan, and the destiny that God has prepared you for. It's the prophecies, and they are the promises that it is time for them to maturate before your very eyes. It is time for you to receive the inheritance of which God has prepared for your life. I'm preaching them better. Some of y'all better shouting out there. I'm telling you right now, something is happening in this atmosphere. Listen to me. It's a time of justice. You're going to see a lot of scandals coming out this year. Why? People have been doing dirt in private, but God kept the books. Now watch this. But there's also been people that have been sowing in private. And ain't nobody seen them. And they've been faithful. And people tried to take them out. And people tried to destroy them. And they're pulling knives out of their back. And people are lying on them. And all these types of things. But guess what? God kept the books. I, that's why God said you better forgive everybody that's done you wrong. Do you want God to pay you back or do you want it back from them? They can't give you nothing. Let them go, baby. Let go of it. Don't let bitterness and unforgiveness. You can't take that into your new season. God says I will repay. This is the reality. Every place that you've sown, Joseph, and nobody has known. There are Josephs, hear me, that are in prison right now, but they didn't do anything wrong. There are preachers that are in prison, but they're not guilty. There are people right now that you would not as well even look at, but God said, they are my choice saints, falsely accused. And people say, why is that? Because God always uses the prison to prepare you for the palace. Oh, if you can't praise him and give him glory in the prison, you'll take the glory in the palace. But you got to learn to praise God when nobody, and that's why I'm saying if you're still here, it's because you are still got to praise even in prison. Some of you have gotten to the point that God, even if I'm in here the rest of my life, I'll still praise you and I'll still give you glory. No matter what, may you receive the glory, the honor, and the praise, whether in the prison or in the palace, in Potiphar's house or the pit, in the prophecy or through the trial. God, I will bless you at all times and your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Joseph in prison prophesies to the butler. The butler leaves, gets promoted, and forgets all about Joe in prison. Some of y'all think because man forgot, God did too. Listen to me. Man may forget about you. The only reason why God's allowed man to do what they've done is for this reason. Hear me well. It's because God wants you to realize where I'm about to take you, ain't nobody getting the glory. What I'm about to do in your life, no man can do it. As a matter of fact, man will try to destroy you. But listen, when you've got a prophecy hanging over your head, God's going to bring it into manifestation into your life. Number three, when the latter rain comes, it's a time when the windows of heaven and the doors of earth open up. My good God. When the windows of heaven open up, the doors, do you hear what I said? When the windows of heaven pour out blessing, doors of favor begin to open up for people in the body of Christ. God is opening up the window. Listen, when we talked about Roe v. Wade being overturned, it is a window of opportunity for those that have been prepared. Listen to me. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, God destroyed the spiritual wickedness in high places, dethroned them of power, and now he's coming to you, Joe, and saying, I've given you the plan to bring my people through. And let me say this as well. I wish I had more time, but I don't. I believe the next seven years are critical for the body of Christ. We are in a seven-year window where God is telling us to prepare Goshen. Listen, people are coming out of debt supernaturally this year. People are going to be healed that have been battling with sicknesses. People are going to be promoted. Favor is coming. Why? Because it is the time for the word of the Lord to be revealed. I can't stay there. Number four, it is a time of favor and blessing. It's best illustrated in the life of Joseph. I wish I had time to teach all of this, but I don't. Five things I want to give you. When Joseph in Genesis chapter 41 got elevated, there were five things that happened. Number one, his, pl his platform changed. He was promoted. Get ready. The year of the latter rain is when God establishes you on a new platform. Jesus, help me. Somebody better get this right now. Number two, he was given a signet ring. Let me tell you something. 
your authority is getting ready to be changed. Where you did not have a voice, you're about to have a voice. Pastor Gary, when I went over to, I was down in Pine Richland, and they had this horrible book, All Boys Aren't Blue. I made the news. And I went there and in front of all of these people. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to them. And it's a book that has some of the worst homosexual, graphic, pornographic things oh available God. for kids mm -hmm. in our schools. Mm -hmm. Not on my watch. I went in there, had 150 people booing me, 200 people. I don't know how many were there. I went in there proud as a peacock, <laughs> standing for Jesus, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, if we could have some people that ain't afraid. That ain't scared to point their finger under the nose of the devil. And had all these people booing. You know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He said, I didn't call you to speak to the crowd. The crowd is not where the authority is, Pastor mm -hmm. Gary. Mm -hmm. yeah. I called you to speak to the board. Mm -hmm. Pastors, if we can understand our authority, you're not called to speak to the crowd, to people that are swayed here and there. I'm called to speak to a board member. And they're the ones that are going to wrestle at night. They're the ones that God's going to say, I've given you that position. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. God's about to give you authority Come to on. do your purpose in the earth. Mm -hmm. He gave Joseph a signet ring, which meant whatever you put into law, mm -hmm. I will authorize. Mm -hmm. My good God Almighty. I'm telling you right now, the authority needed to do what God has called you to do is coming in the latter rain. It's coming right now upon you. The authorization that even hell will recognize you. You don't believe me? The early reign with Jesus was when he was 12. He was in the tabernacle or the temple, confounding all of the scribes, the Pharisees. He's confounding them. And then all of a sudden he said, I gotta be about my father's business. And the Bible says he went back home, and for 18 years, you didn't hear anything about Jesus. That was the early reign. But then he comes to the Jordan gets baptized, and what happens? Heaven opens. Spirit comes upon him like a dove. A voice speaks. Why? Because when heaven opens, hear me well, it is for the explicit purpose of your purpose. God doesn't anoint you so you can be cute. He anoints you with pinpoint air. That's why when Jesus came out, he knew his mission. He knew what he was called to do. This will be a year because the purpose of the latter end is God is going to give you clear-cut directives as to why you are anointed for such a time as this. Jesus, for 30 years, nobody knows his name. Out of nowhere, Jesus, all of a sudden, now hell knows his name. Now all of a sudden, he's walking on water. Get ready, baby. That's what's getting ready to happen for you. You've been home making tables, being a carpenter, but now you're getting ready to leave Home Depot and Lowe's. Put in your two weeks' notice because you're about to go from making tables and selling lumber to walking on water, raising the dead, healing the sick, multiplying the loaves and the fish. You didn't realize why you was working at Home Depot, baby. God was preparing you for a worldwide ministry. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody needs to get this right now. A signet ring is coming. The next thing that he gave Joseph was a new attire. Get ready for a new anointing. That's why the old anointing is going dim. My good God. But let me say this. New anointings always come from old wells. Man, there's a message in that. That's why a lot of this music, I told our church, Pastor Gary, I told our church, Pastor Tiff, I told our church, I said, if that song don't move you, don't, don't sing it in church. That's right. If it ain't, good God Almighty, give me some preachers. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't move you at home, praise and worship leader, don't you sing it in the pulpit. If it doesn't move heaven, if it doesn't cause the glory to fall, what are we singing it for? Just because it's number one and got a Grammy nod, that don't mean God's hand is on That's it. Right. Take me back to the river. That's right. I'll sing at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy. All day. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever. See, when are we going to get back to singing about the Bible? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know everybody don't want to hear that because you, you want to be liked. But I don't want to be liked. I want him to like me. That's right. I want to have the presence of God in my church. I want to have it in my home. That's the only thing that's going to change this world. We got to go back to the old wells. We got to go back to the old places. Why? Because at the old wells comes new living water. I can't stay there. No. Number four, he gave him a gold chain. Y'all ready for this? This is where you can shout. The reason why I gave him the gold chain is because it's a time of favor 
and wealth and blessing. Joseph changed his clothes. He had prison clothes, and now he's got clothes that, that are outstanding. He gave him a beautiful whole new wardrobe. Why? It's symbolic of a new anointing. If you follow Joseph's life, uh, he first got the coat of many colors. Uh, then that was stripped off of him. Then he gets the clothes that he wore in Potiphar's house. But then Potiphar's wife stripped him there. Watch this. Uh, then he goes to the prison. When he's there in the prison, Joseph takes off his own clothes there. Nobody stripped him this time. Baby, you better get ready to disrobe because God's getting ready to put a whole new robe of glory and anointing on your life. And, and it's going to be not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the latter rain that you've been fighting for, that you've been waiting for, that God is releasing. The last thing is that he put him in what was called the second chariot. What does that mean? God, I said, Lord, what's the second chariot? Why did you change his transportation? He said, up until this point, you've moved and operated by foot. He said, now you're going to be able to do twice as much, twice as fast. You're going to be able to carry more than you've ever carried. What is that symbolic? Because the, the demand that's going to be put upon your life, God's about to accelerate your ability. That's why the Bible says if you can't run with the footmen, how will you contend with the horses? The early rain is when you're working. The latter rain is when you're in there, but you're going even faster. It's called grace, baby. Get ready. There's an anointing of grace that is coming upon your life. Yes, and let me say this real quick. That's what 24 is all about. It's three eights. And God's about to triple the new beginnings in your life. He's about to give you new favor. He's about to give you new wealth. And he's about to give you new beginnings and new doors. It's coming right now. It is happening in the name of Jesus. It is a time of favor of blessing. And the last one, number five, it's a time of abundance. My good God. You're about to go from just enough to more than enough. Mm, in the wilderness, mm. they had just enough for the day, but the manna ceased, and I can see it now. Church people getting nervous. Why are things drying up? Because you're getting ready to come into abundance. Come Thus saith the Lord, the cruise of oil and the barrel of meal will not waste until God sends his rain upon the earth. The cruise is going dry. The barrel's about to be empty because God's about to send you more than enough. The anointing of El Shaddai is coming upon your life. For what purpose? It's a time of a hundredfold return. And why is it a hundredfold? You don't realize that in your past season, you have been planting, you've been sowing and reaping little, saying, God, why haven't I seen my harvest? But what's about to happen is God's about to hit the switch in heaven the rain's about to fall, and when you look back and see a barren land, get ready. There will be harvest and blessing. Uh -oh. There will be breakthrough and favor. Yes. There will be open door because yes. you have sown the seeds, yes. and God is getting ready to release the rain into your life, right. and his grace is about to work for you. You're not going to have to do the work on your own. God is about to work in you and through you because it is the time for the latter rain. Yes. My good God. Even in a week that we just came out of, Dr. King, my wife and I had the honor and the privilege to go up and we spoke at St. Vincent College. Had no idea that God was calling us to be champions for pro-life. I just wanted to build my church. I didn't plan on being on a platform in front of six, 7,000 people in Harrisburg talking about pro-life. I didn't plan on being on Cornerstone, doing uh, uh, life in a post-roll world, opening up a pregnancy center, getting death threats. I didn't plan any of that. But for this cause, we've been brought to the kingdom. This is a season that God is bringing you into your purpose. I want you to hear this preacher well. God never sends me anywhere unless there's a divine purpose. I never come without a package because I didn't send myself. God opens up the doors. And I'm telling you right now, these five blessings are coming your way. Grandma, you're not leaving this planet they're not leaving this planet until they know Jesus. Man of God, woman of God, God ain't forgot about your ministry. I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of no-name people that God's getting ready to raise up in 24 that can't be bought, that won't water down the message. Give it to me straight, baby, no chaser. I want it straight out of the bottle, baby. I don't, I don't want nothing watered down. God's got some men and women that can't be bought eating locusts and wild and honey, wild honey. They are the ones that God is going to bring to the kingdom because he's going to bless them with immeasurable wealth. Yeah. Oh, I know no one wants to hear about that. Why? Because they can't be bought. Mm -hmm. They're not going to water it down. Why? They didn't water it down when they was in the prison. Yeah. 
God's getting ready to raise them up. There's getting ready to be favor like you've never had before in your life. Why? You're, the time for the revelation and the manifestation of purpose is now. Some of you listening right now, you don't realize the moment that you hear this. Well, I don't feel a whole lot. Whoever said feelings had anything to do when God said, let there be light, it took off at 186,000 miles per second. It hasn't stopped since. They're still trying to chase down what he's spoken. They'll never catch it. Why? Because the word will work all by itself. Jesus, help me. This is a time of fulfillment. It's a time of purpose. You're not watching by accident. You're watching because you've been stuck and wondering why you're in a rut. But God is going to release you today. The promises that have been spoken of your children, your grandchildren. Some of you are watching right now and you say, man, I'm supposed to have a spouse. You haven't gotten it yet. And you're saying, why? Because it's not about you getting married. There's purpose connected to it. The timing of God is coming. Some of you are waiting on doors to begin to open up. You're wondering why they haven't opened. It's coming in this year. God said, tell my people that in 24, what it seemingly seemed like it was denied and delayed, this will be the year that you will see the manifestation of it. He said, this will be the greatest year of favor and blessing that you have ever known for the express purpose of your purpose. God is raising people up to take the land. Why? Jesus is coming back. Yeah. And it's not going to be long. I don't care what people are saying. It's not going to be long. And this is the time, the season, and the moment that God means business with you. You cannot quit. You cannot throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity. You've been waiting for this your whole life. There are many of you that are tired, that are weary. You've been discouraged. You've tried to pray. You've tried to fast. It's not that. Listen, this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell them. They're like Jesus when he was at the wedding of Cana of Galilee. The party needed to go on, but they were out of wine. And I'm going to fast forward through this. But God said you have sa he has saved the best wine for last. Your, your latter days are going to be greater than your former days. What you have been through, what you have battled through, get ready for what. I'm telling you, it's not coming. It's happening yeah. right now. The word of the Lord is being sent to you because it's happening right now. In this moment, Amen. in this moment, the word of the Lord is coming to you right into your home. There, you're going to begin to feel strength come into your life. You're going to feel faith begin to resurrect. You're going to wake up the next morning and say, man, I feel something different on my life. It's beginning to rain in your life. Uh, we on. sing a song back in the day. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Well, it's beginning to sound a lot like rain. The yeah. rain is coming, ladies and gentlemen. The rain is now. The windows of heaven are open. And the, I hear the Lord saying, if you are listening to this message, go grab an umbrella because the rain is coming. You're in a season like it was with Elijah, he told Ahab, hurry up. Why? Because the, the rain is coming, and I don't want it to slow you down. Some of y'all better get ready. You're getting ready to get thrust into your purpose, call, and destiny. God's about to wake you up out of nowhere. You're going to find yourself right in the middle of the moment that God has prepared for you. It is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Preacher, what do I need to do? You need to link up with what God's purpose and plan is. This is going to be a seed of release. I have done many of these fundraisers. There's something different about this. I told my church when I preached this message on New Year's Eve, in every church I preached it at, I felt a touch of God. Every time he changes it for the people that are viewing. This is completely, it's the same thesis, but the outline is completely different because it's tailor-made for you. Yeah. There are those of you watching right now that used to be a partner, God's saying, Partner up again. But I got offended. I didn't like what they did. Partner up again. I had somebody stop me. I had spoke at a, a prayer breakfast last weekend. And when I spoke there, a guy came to me and said, I'm just going to be honest with you. He said, why are you raising money for Cornerstone? You doing all this stuff to raise money for them? If you don't stop, God's going to judge you. I gave him a handshake and said, I'm the one that helps raise the money for him. I thought, I'm going to keep on preaching this in Jesus' name. I, see, the devil's nervous. He, didn't, he don't want you all to get what I'm talking about. Why are preachers talking about money? It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with obedience. Yeah. Can God trust you? And I'm telling you right now, I have done many of these, but there's a special touch on this. I'm not called to talk to everybody, but if you're watching, I'm talking to you. And I believe with all of my heart. And I'm asking every person right now, under the sound of my voice, Pastor Jay, I'm in need. I, if, if I'm talking to you, you know it. You know right now I'm in need of the rain. I need the rain, God. 
I need it on my marriage. I need it on my health. Some of you are believing God for healing. The reason why you're being attacked in your physical body is because it's been an attack of the enemy to stop you from your purpose. God's saying, I'm ready to break that thing off of your life. Your family members, God says, I'm ready to save them. Your ministry, he's ready to do it. He's ready. He's ready. I know you fished all night, Peter, and you ain't caught anything. But God says, now is the appointed time. God can change your season anytime he wants. And I'm telling you, it's shifting right now. I'm asking everybody that would, don't go yet. When I release you, I want you to go. I want you to grab a seat of release and say, God, I need the latter rain in my life. God, I need... I need the windows of heaven and doors of earth open. I need restoration in my life. I know there's places I need to be, and I'm not there yet, God. And, Lord, I need the doors to open. I need the prophecies and and, and the fulfillment of my purpose to come to fruition. I need that favor and blessing. I need those five things that Joseph had. I need that abundance in my life. And you're not asking for abundance just so you can have money, so you can have a nice yacht and a nice car and a nice house. You're saying, God, I need it in order to do what you have called me to do. It is coming. It is coming. Pastor Jay, I believe this word is for me. I believe you're speaking right to me. I believe this. I believe that word. I could feel it leaping in my spirit. My heart is burning. I know it's for me. I want you to grab that seat. And when I count to three, I want you to run to your phone. Everybody, go grab it right now. Grab your phone. Put it on speed dial. Put it in right now. 888-665-4483. And I want you to get ready. Listen to me. I'm telling you right now, if you will act in obedience, God said, this is what I want you to do. Listen, the heavens are open. I'm, I, reason why I usually don't do this, but God gave me specific instructions. He said, tell the people to write what you want and ask for what you need. My wife, come here, Pastor Tiff. I'm going to bring her on real quick. One of the things that we've always done, we've always written down everything that God has done. From the time that I've known you, Mm -hmm. you would write down things even for our wedding. Mm -hmm. We wrote down everything we wanted. And when people write it down, what happens? God moves. God moves. I mean, I have a little book there and um, I wrote down everything, Pastor Jay, everything, everything that I was believing God for, I wrote down. And literally, I went back and I checked, I took my little, my little pen and I checked it off one by one and I put the date on there the date on that God broke through for me. So you have to write it down, write the vision. Write it down. I need somebody to go get me an, uh, an envelope. Please bring that off for me real quickly. I want you to get ready and when you call the prayer partner, I'm going to show you the prayer partners are going to, God said, listen to me, write what you want, ask for what you need. Mm-hmm. And this is what he said to me, you've run out of wine. But God said, I have saved the best for last. Can I get one of those envelopes? Can somebody bring me one of those? That would be great. I want you to write, I'm going to ask the prayer partner to write down what you're believing God for. You say, Pastor Jay, what are you believing God for? I'm believing that God is going to send a boatload of y'all to sow a seed of $1,000. I've always believed there's something supernatural that happens at the $1,000 level. There are some of you that are watching right now. You used to partner, and God says, come back. And when you come back and partner with Cornerstone, God says, I've got people that are getting ready to partner with you. Thank you. God said, I I got, did you hear what I just said? God says, if you will come back and partner with Cornerstone, I got people that are going to partner with you. What you make happen for this house, God says, I'm going to make happen for your house. On here, they're going to write down under comments. When you sow that gift of $1,000, $84 a month for uh, uh, for 12 months, for a total of $1,000, as you write that down, we are going to mix our praying with our giving. We're going to write, write what we want. And we're going to ask for what we need. And then you're going to go back and I want you to begin to pray over those things. And I want you to call because this is the scripture God gave me for you. Zechariah 10.1. It says, ask for the rain in the time of rain. This is the season that God's saying, ask for the rain in the time of rain. God says, I'm opening the windows for you. And when you sow what you call, I will manifest. What you speak, I will bring into existence. Be careful of what you speak. Don't go by your feelings, speak your prophecy, speak your promise. This is the season that God said, I'm releasing the rain to cultivate the harvest that is going to come up in your life. And everywhere you look, you are going to see fulfillment, promise, and blessing come into manifestation. Now, on the count of three, I want you to say, Pastor Jay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the latter rain. When you ring that phone, you're calling for the rain. When you ring that phone, you text to that number. Whatever you got to do, go to ctvn.org. But get in on this moment. Just like when Roe v. Wade was overturned, 
There was a, there's a window of opportunity. Windows do not stay open forever. The children of Israel, God said, I want to take you into the promised land. After 40 days, they came back and said, we're not able. They allowed the grasshopper mentality to afflict them. They allowed fear. If you want to know where your purpose is and where the will of God is, check where the spirit of fear is. Because God always calls you to stir up where the devil attacks you with fear because it immobilizes you so you can't move and activate what God's called you to do. I'm telling you right now. If you will step out and you will partner, God says, I've got people waiting that are going to partner with you. Hear me well. Hear me well. I feel the spirit of the Lord on this. I'm telling you right now. When Joseph prophesied, the butler was in place but forgot about Joseph. God says, I am going to bring you back to remembrance to people that have forgotten about you. God said, I have not forgotten, but with this step of obedience, I am going to release what I have promised and what I've spoken. You need to step out when I count to three, and I want you to run to that phone. We're all going to do it together on the count of three, and God is going to release the rain. Are you ready? I'm telling you what, the moment you pick up that phone, start calling for the rain. Say, Pastor Jay, I'm believing for the rain. I need it on my marriage. I need it on my business. I need it in my ministry. I need it in my physical body. I need it in my finances. I need it for my business plan. I don't know what you need. I don't care what you need. God knows. But if you're willing to partner with Cornerstone, God says, I'm going to have people partner with you. You're not going to have to ask. You're not going to have to ask the people. God says, I'm going to send them to you because you've asked me. On the count of three, I want you to go to the phone. Are you ready? Are you ready? Everybody, let's get ready to go. Grab your phones. We're dialed up. Get ready to press call. Are you ready to go? 888-665-4483. The rain is coming. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain that's coming. Go to your phone right now. One, two, three. Everybody go right now. Come on. Everybody rush in. Rush in right now. Run to your phone. Run to the prayer partner. Tell them, I'm believing God for the latter rain. The latter rain is now. It's not coming. It's not going to manifest down the line. It's happening right now. If you can sow it right now, call them and say, I'm ready to sow right at this moment. If you don't have it and you say you're going to pledge it, say, put me down for $84 a month for the next 12 months. I'm ready to come into my purpose. I'm ready for favor and blessing. I'm ready for the open windows of heaven and the open doors on earth. I'm ready for a time of abundance. I'm ready for my prophecies and purpose to be fulfilled. I'm ready for the blessing and the manifestation of God's goodness in my life. I'm ready for the blessing that came upon Joseph to come into my life. When you call, you're saying, it's my time. What has been held up? God says, it's coming right now. It's being released right now. It's coming right now. Those of you that used to partner, God says, come back and link up, and I will send partners to partner with your ministry. I will send pharaohs in order to promote and to finance the dream, the plan, and the vision that I have for your life. It's coming right now. Go to your phone, 888-665-4483. It's the time for the latter rain, Pastor Gary. It's the time for people to call in. It's a time of activation. We've got to get off of the front row. It's time to become a participant in the miracle. Let's get them in, in Jesus' name. Yes, it Amen. is. Amen. Well, you have heard that word. You have heard that relevant word, so we encourage you, come on, $84 a month or a one-time gift of $1,000, you could put it on your credit or your debit card. Listen, if you've just tuned in, if you've just tuned in, maybe you're going through that dial and something caught your attention, you are watching our Visions of Hope Breakthrough 2024 Fundraiser. You say, why does Cornerstone Television have to have fundraisers? Because we're not like all the other stations. All the other stations play commercials every seven minutes. You don't see commercials like that on Cornerstone Television. We don't have big corporate sponsors. In fact, the FCC requires us as a non profit organization, a 501c3, that the majority of our income has to come through free will donations. And that's why we pause. We used to have two-week fundraisers, but we know you like your regular programming. We know you like us to get back to us showing all the wonderful programs that you enjoy. But we pause for just a few days to ask you for your prayers and partnership. 
Pastor Jay shared this word. It is the time of the latter rain. And some of you have been in a dry place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of you have just been going through mm -hmm. a dry season. Mm -hmm. Some of you have never fully even come out of that pandemic. Yeah. And today is the day for you to shift. 2024 mm. is a year That's for so you to yeah. move into a season of the latter rain. And in order to do that, we're asking you to sow a seed of either $1,000 one time or $80 four dollars a month we need your partnership there are many of you many of you that are watching you were partners in the past but for whatever reason maybe with the economic times last year you were unable to give but God is saying it's time to renew your pledge why don't you just pause for a moment because maybe it's been longer than you think since you've sown a seed into the good ground and fertile soil of Cornerstone Television. Why don't you begin in this new year, in this month of January, by saying, I want to partner with Cornerstone Television. We are doing so many things that are making a difference, that are changing and transforming lives that are healing broken marriages that are seeing rebellious wayward children coming back to Christ that are seeing people's lives literally turned around and transformed but we cannot do that without your help many of you love the programming that we bring all of the in-house programs, all of the national programs. Many of you leave Cornerstone Television on 24 hours a day. But it costs resources and finances to be able to do that. And Pastor Jay has shared what the Lord put on his heart and on his spirit. And now he's asking you to be obedient by going to the phone, 888 888- 665-4483 or go to ctvn.org. 